pregame.com. Pregame.tv breaking down some NBA TNT action. Dallas Mavericks at San Antonio Spurs. VR is going to tell us what the right side is on this game. VR, I like talking about good games. Oftentimes I pick like crappy <laughs> games because they're easier to find. True, true. But you think you've isolated something we can look at. In this I, I do. I, I'm going to look to the total and not the side here. And I really think there's some value on the under. When you look at the first time these two teams played, they scored 220 points. The total is 204, and I think based on that result, we may get a little bit of line value. This is the last time they played. Exactly, the last meeting. And when you look at the Spurs, they're an under team, especially at home. They're if you just blindly bet the Spurs under at home, you'd be cashing about 60, 65 percent of your tickets. Especially for the off a loss. Exactly. And they the, tighten it up. They and, tighten it up. And right now, as we're talking, they are getting their their butts kicked in the winter wonderland of Minnesota. Probably upset that they had to play a back to back and fly all the way up there. Now they get to fly home, have a day off. Pop's going to be on these guys, right? Exactly. And you could see he already wanted to give some guys some rest. Duncan's not playing the night. You know, so uh, I always believe that it takes more effort to play defense than offense. You know, usually when when uh, casual better see t teams that they think may be tired, may be physically exhausted, they may uh, assume right away that you're not going to get a lot of points. I, I look at it the opposite. I think... If anything, that's when you're going to get scoring because it does take so much more effort to really D it up. You, sure. you could tell the slackers in, in, in all sports are the guys that don't play defense. And you got Popovich coming off a loss who gave some rest because he, he doesn't want an exhausted Duncan. And you have that first game where they scored 220 points. And you have an under team like the Spurs at home. And it's a primetime game, which is always going to get you a little inflated total. No doubt. Everyone's going to look to play over. To bet over. Let's go back to that because it's I did a little research. Storm. I went to look at the box score in that first time they played the 220. 27-20, end of the first quarter. Uh, then a 49-point quarter, second quarter. And what happens is that the Spurs go ahead Get ahead, get ahead by a big margin. Fourth quarter, Dallas outscores them 39-25 in garbage time and a foul fest at the end. So what that tells me, put a big asterisk by that final score. Right. Make that 64 a 50. Now instead of 220, you're looking at what should have been a 204 and basically right on pace with where this total is at 203 is. And now we got the Spurs coming off the loss. But I love that when you get a final score. I actually think on these NBA totals, you should like print out what the score is at the end of the third quarter and normalize that upwards and you'd wind up with a truer final score yep. than the nonsense with the foul fest and the garbage times and whatever might happen. Uh, agree? agree. And then when you look at Dallas, you look at the team, and you touched on it last week, that you can't just look at the points that a team scores. Because just like a team that scores a lot of points may give up a lot of points, but that doesn't make them necessarily a bad defensive team. It's just the tempo and the style of ball they play. When you look at, at, at the real numbers with Dallas, they're 11th in the NBA in field goal percentage allowed. Spurs are sixth, so this is almost a top ten team as far as that goes. Traditional rivals close by, exactly. geographically, always tend to play it. That that always that tends to be good game. for the the closer to the vest sort of game. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I just think we're going to get line value. I, I think the situation sets up nicely with the Spurs getting blown out in Minnesota, with Duncan getting rest, with with Popovich getting on his team for getting blown out, and I think Den, uh, Dallas knows you're not going to outscore the Spurs, play that style of basketball, and really beat them, especially in San Antonio. Especially if you're Dallas. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe so. if you're Oklahoma City, you might. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. But I don't think Dallas is going to look to outscore them like that. I think, you know, it's funny because Brian Leonard and I have been on a roll with our, our videos back before you, you came on, and we were disagreeing on quite a few picks. It makes me wonder what we were, what, what our record was <laughs> on picks that we, that we agreed on. It must be like 90%. But I think yeah, I'm agreeing on, on pretty much everything you're saying. Let's go ahead and make it official here. Dallas is San Antonio. Yeah, Mavs are having a down year for sure. Uh, but this is still a rivalry game in Texas. And I really think we're going to get some line value here. Steve touched on that first game. The final score really wasn't a reflection of, of how the game would have played out if not for that junk time towards the end. So I think we're going to get some line value. Spurs are a good under team at home. And then, of course, you're going to get a pretty pissed off Popovich. His team's going to D it up come Thursday night. I like the under in this game.
Very good. And I think you're on the right side. And we're talking about junk time before I do a transition here to our next video. I have to talk about the Iona game. <laughs> the worst beat ever. Uh, you know, you're the second person that's talked told me that today. You said junk time, garbage the time. Person that said at, at the very for anyone who didn't see it or hear about it, Iona's laying four. They're yeah. up eight with one second to play. You think, okay. You're already maybe, walking to the window. You're ready to go catch what, that. You, exactly. You're saying something. All right, maybe well, two things can happen. A meteorite can strike the planet. The I don't stadium. get to cash my ticket. No one gets to cash the ticket. Their, their tickets get cashed. Or alternatively, okay, maybe my idiot player fouls a guy who's shooting a three. It goes in. He makes a free throw. I have a one in a billion chance to push. You know? If, if, what happens, the ball's in the air. The crowd storms the, the, the court. Swish. And what what ref would call a technical foul here? I mean, it's like it's like Scrooge. I mean, it's just unbelievable. When both free throws go in. It lands three, and so go figure. You know, I mean, those those investigation. Those, those things, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> no have either, investigation. I didn't have out who either. Refs so, were. I didn't have either movement. side. I just, I just, I, it's nothing to do with what we're talking about. I'm going to have to find a segue here as we go, we go into our next video. So <laughs> college, we're going to college. We're going to college basketball. It's a perfect segue. You got to be. You can have the right side, and you don't always win. I didn't have either side, and then Manhattan, I own a game, but I. Might I might add that Manhattan arguably has had the two ugliest games of the year because they had that Fairfield 34-31 win where they couldn't score five points in five minutes, and here they got five points in .1 seconds. Stay tuned. I'm going to give you an ugly game. We're going to talk about Northwestern <laughs> Iowa. I know everyone wants to talk <laughs> the about best game on the, board. the conference championship games. This isn't the best game on the board. I do think I've got a winner for you. Stay tuned. Check back with us, pregame.tv. They all cash the same.